when I became the medical uh, director of neuro-oncology uh, at uh, Tufts Medical Center, I had the privilege of participating in the EF14 trial. So I tell everybody, I came in at the ninth inning and I was a closer for the trial at Tufts Medical Center. Tufts actually uh, enrolled 17 patients in this trial. And when I was looking at this data, I was uh, very impressed with it. And I think it's confusing to a lot of people who didn't participate in the trial who haven't used it commercially. But the company's called Novacure, and the device is called Optune. And what it is, is it's basically these adhesive pads that have embedded in them. Adhesive pads are made by 3M, and they have embedded in it ceramic electrodes that are in this basically conductive gel. And you wear it front and back, right, left. In the original trial, and then you have it connected to a device. And the device has uh, the battery in it. It has um, a computer in it. Uh, and what it does is it generates this alternating uh, electrical field um, that is then targeted and you can basically use a computer program. You can see the tumor and you can, based on uh, putting in measurements in the axial uh, measurements and uh, the circumference of the head and, and the front back measurements, you can plug those into the software and you can create a map for which they can direct the rays towards the tumor. Why is that important? Because 90% of the time, if the tumor comes back, it comes back within two centimeters of the resection cavity. So if you are gonna generate an electric, uh, electrical field, you want it to basically ge generate it to the area of concern. And, and that's what the device does. And why is that important? Because people say, well, you know, how do electrical fields cure my cancer? Because I think everybody's been told in the past, electrical fields might cause my cancer, you know? And I, and I think it's, I've told the company, they're like Galileo. You know, everybody always knew the earth was flat. We just knew it, right? We just knew it was flat. And poor Galileo almost was burnt by the Pope because it was heresy to say that, you know, no, 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 actually the earth is round and I can prove it to you. So I think what this company has done is shows that, has shown to everybody that everybody's always assumed that, oh my God, my cell phone's probably giving me a brain cancer or I shouldn't be living too close to a power line. But they didn't realize that actually electricity can be harnessed to do things that you want it to do that could be beneficial, just like radiation too as well. So this, uh, GBMs are actually very, very rare because of that. And um, because the cell, you know, the cells of the brain just don't, don't want to grow. And so this is the perfect opportunity to test out this thing because you really, there's nothing else that should be dividing in the brain. So when you're generating these electrical fields, you're really having very targeted therapy uh, towards these growing brain cells which should not be growing. And I think at the end of the day, uh, they proved it, you know? Um, and, uh, and I'm very glad they did because um, as an oncologist, when I first did my fellowship in 1999, the two-year survival for these patients with brain tumors was dismal, far under 10%, probably under 5% for all comers. And we're now so much better and in 15 years of my career, and I'm just told by the time I retire, we'll get even better. Uh, tumor treating fields um, um, are new to uh, neuro-oncology. Um, this technology has not been um, uh, around in the clinical setting for that long. Um, however, we now have uh, FDA approval uh, for the use of tumor treating fields um, in the form of an uh, optune device in both uh, recurrent glioblastoma patients and newly diagnosed uh, patients. Um, the study um, that led to the approval of the device in the recurrent disease um, uh, was conducted several years ago. Um, almost 300 patients were included in this study. Um, and the study was um, comparing uh, this new technology, tumor treating fields, uh, to standard of care um, uh, in the recurrent glioblastoma. So basically, chemotherapy was compared to tumor treating fields. Um, the results of the study um, indicated that there was no really uh, significant difference uh, between the two arms. So patients who uh, received uh, tumor treating fields um, didn't do better um, than patients who were on chemotherapy. Um, however, in terms of side effects, um, there was definitely less side effects in the tumor treating fields group um, than it was in the chemotherapy group. And uh, on that premise, um, FDA uh, granted the approval um, of the device for uh, recurrent disease. Um, once this happened, uh, uh, the study in newly diagnosed patients was already in the making. Um, again, the, uh, the, the idea behind doing this study was that uh, tumor treating fields uh, might be more powerful when they are combined with chemotherapy. Uh, the analogy can be given here to uh, um, use of radiation therapy in combination with temozolomide 
uh, that we know um, is beneficial. Patients who um, uh, receive both treatments, radiation, temozolomide, as shown by uh, Roger Stoop uh, uh, almost 11 years ago now, um, uh, uh, this combination of treatment is better. Um, Preclinical data with tumor treating fields also indicated that uh, when tumor treating fields, uh, which uh, are actually anti-mitotic, they, they um, disrupt the process of mitosis, uh, when provided in combination with chemotherapy, actually result in, in better outcomes. So that's how the uh, study newly diagnosed patients was designed. Uh, this was really based on the uh, original platform using radiation with temozolomide. Um, and uh, so this was a control arm and the, the um, uh, sort of a study arm was addition, included addition of the tumor treating fields into uh, the standard of care, so radiation and temozolomide. Um, this study showed um, significant improvement uh, in overall survival of, of almost five months uh, in patients who uh, received uh, tumor treating fields with temozolomide as opposed to patients who were treated with uh, standard of care therapy. Um, the interim analysis of this um, study was published last year um, and uh, we are anticipating the uh, discussion and disclosure of the full data set uh, at the Society of Neuroncology meeting in November of 2016. Um, uh, we, we hope that uh, the data will um, indicate uh, that what we have seen in the interim analysis uh, holds uh, true and, and indeed uh, addition of the tumor treating fields uh, to standard of care um, significantly improves uh, survival in patients with newly diagnosed uh, glioblastoma. So when we think about the impact on, of Optune on overall survival, we have to look at two categories of patients. First of all, for the newly diagnosed patients, if Optune is started after the completion of radiation and temozolomide, and it's used in combination with temozolomide, and continued to be used after the first and even the second progression until the two-year interval is reached, the data that we have from the EF14 study show an increase in survival of five months. Uh, some people will say, how much is five months? But I want to remind you that actually the approval of temozolomide or Tamadar was based on an increase of survival of two months. So we think that this is a major step forward. If we look at the recurrent patients with glioblastoma, the way on which this device was approved was an, uh, a study on which it was compared with physician choice of chemotherapy. And the results showed that the use of the device is as good as using chemotherapy. People survived as long, but with less side effects due to the toxicities of chemotherapy, as the device has very minimum side effects and none of them systemic. 